you might just be wrecking your YouTube video's performance because of the first 30 seconds. Let me explain. You gotta just press record. Hey, what's up? It's Omar Tukoy with Think Media. And if you didn't know this about YouTube, YouTube has a love language, kind of two languages actually. The first language is click-through rate. This is with the title and the thumbnail of your video to convince people to click on your video. The next language that YouTube speaks is average view duration. Put AVD in the comments. Average view duration is the amount of time spent watching your video and you have 30 seconds to convince somebody to keep watching your video. So in this training, Sean's gonna be breaking down how you can go inside of your YouTube studio and find the right data that your audience is telling you so that you can start tweaking your videos to get longer audience retention. And be sure to stick throughout the training because Sean's gonna share the six ways we start every video here at Think Media. Run it, Sean. Now, one thing that's fascinating is that here inside of your YouTube analytics, we can see an area where YouTube says key moments for audience retention. Now what's powerful is YouTube is saying, here's the percentage of viewers that are still watching at 30 seconds. The fact that YouTube shows us this inside of analytics indicates to us that they are obsessed with whether, like, whether or not your video succeeds is whether or not you can hold a viewer's attention for even 30 seconds. So what does that tell us? It tells us that ultimately, Great if you've got great content at five minutes. You have a 16-minute video. It would be awesome if people could get there. But if you can't hold people's attention for 30 seconds, it doesn't matter what's later on in your video. Just like if you can't get the click, your next challenge is how do I get them to watch the first 30 seconds, stay for the first 30 seconds, and then influence the viewer or hopefully encourage the viewer to keep watching for the rest of the video. And a lot of times... a you wanna go into your individual video analytics and look for an audience retention curve. Ideally, it would be flat. Ideally, nobody would leave your video, but if it could be as gradual of a slope as possible like this, then that's kind of ideal. This video is doing very well. And then right at the end there, you see how it drops off because that's where the end card pops off and then people go to another video. But this right here is the dreaded hockey stick, right? The reason it's called a hockey stick is because uh, people start the video and then leave it almost immediately. It's a giant cliff of average view duration, audience retention. And so our goal is to fix the hockey stick. You want to keep people at least watching for 30 seconds. And then throughout these power sessions, our goal is to get people going all the way through the video, as well as then transitioning into the next video. Now, two metrics we see inside of here that are important is one is the average view duration. That's the total amount of minutes the person watches or all viewers watch on average of the video. But there's also the average percentage viewed. So what's the difference? Well, your video might be an hour long and could have an average view duration of 10 minutes, which is, let's actually say your video, because I'm horrible at math, was 100 minutes long. So you have a 100 minute long video, average view duration of 10 minutes. Honestly, that's pretty good because if you can keep the average person hanging on your video for 10 minutes, that's a long time. But the average percentage viewed would only be 10%, right? 10 out of 100 minutes. So the reason those two metrics matter is that you want to ultimately try to accomplish both things. Let's say the video was 10 minutes and the average viewer watched nine minutes. Then that means you'd have a 90% average percentage viewed and nine minutes of average view duration. So it's a combination of those two numbers that matter um, when it comes to this. And so let's look at some powerful ways that you can power up your hook to hold viewers' attention. Now this video um, Omar made about some GVM lights and it has um, some great metrics. In fact, if you can have your average percentage viewed be over 50%, meaning the average person watches at least half of your video, you're doing really well. So let's watch the hook, the beginning of this video and see what we can learn from Omar. One of the best ways to level up your videos is to level up your lighting. And in this video, we'll be looking at the GVM 800D RGB LED video kit, a super cool lighting kit that is packed full of features for a great price and comes with everything you need to light your videos. And be sure to stick around to the end of the video because I have three tips on lighting yourself for YouTube videos. Let's get it. You gotta just press record. Hey, what's up? It's Omar Tukoy with Think Media, helping you build your influence with online video. 
All right, so what did you notice? Tell me one of some of the things you noticed in that hook that maybe kept it engaging, maybe powered it up, and maybe helped influence why people watched the video for so long. Let me know in the chat uh, some of the things that you saw in regards to um, the power of that video. I see a lot of people saying B-roll. I see Becky saying stick around because, like giving people a reason to keep watching. A summary, Carla says, absolutely. I see pacing the cuts. Yeah, the pacing of it was great. Awesome. So a couple of observations that I want you to write down is one of those is B-roll. Whatever you're telling, also show. Remember show and tell? So Omar's like, here's what's coming up, but then through editing, he added back in clips of what's coming up. Now, your goal is to make those clips as enticing as possible. Like, oh, what is that little cool thing? Or, oh, that part looks interesting. Or, wow, I'd love to stick around to see a little bit more of that. Like, it's a little preview. It's a little teaser in your B-roll clips. Another one is cut to the chase. Like, get to the point. Omar just gets right into it. He just gets straight into the content. Hey, here's what's coming into, or rather, straight into the hook. Here's what's coming up in the video. And then finally, he gives people a reason to watch until the end. Like, Hey, and, and by the way, watch until the end of the video because I've got some tips even at the end. So think about this. What is our goal? Number one, good thumbnail, good title, optimize the content so there's good chapters and things so it shows up in search, right? A big idea, a good video, people want to know about lighting, everything was tested. Now people click. Next challenge, how do I keep them watching? And then how do I keep them watching to the end? And so let's look at another approach to your hook. This is a, a video Nolan did with 50 YouTube video ideas. Let's check out what we can learn from this video. Number one is a first impressions video. Find something new or trending in your space. Give us your thoughts. Give us your first impressions on it. Make a video answering some of the frequently asked questions in your niche. Niche. Niche, niche, I don't know, whatever. Honestly, I'm really annoyed at this one. I just need to get this off my chest, but it's a rant video. You just need to rant to the camera and get angry. You, you don't have to be angry, but you could do a rant video talking about something that irritates you in your industry. You could make a product review video. These get a lot of views on YouTube because people are searching for products and they wanna know if they're good or bad and if they should buy them. And you can make a whole lot of money if you're an affiliate of the product by linking it in the description below. Make a vlog of your day. All right, did you notice anything about the hook of that video? There almost wasn't one. In fact, really, that was a great example of cut to the chase. You know, what does cut to the chase mean? Have you ever watched, you know, maybe like a James Bond movie? You know what I mean? Like, or any good movie that hooks you right at the beginning? What, you, what you'll notice in that movie is it doesn't just open up on some slow moment where there's some backstory and what's happening. The, the term cut to the chase comes from the fact that the opening scene of the video is all of a sudden it's off the cliff. They cut to the chase. And then when it ends up happening, right, it's like all this crazy stuff happened and then it's like two hours earlier. Like, how did he get in that situation? Like, how did he... So you don't have to always think about your content as linear. You can get straight to the point. What I also love that Nolan did here is this is a powerful strategy. I want to encourage you to use this year, which is trim all the fluff. He actually never introduces himself. He doesn't say what Think Media is. He starts with point number one. Like the opening is number one based on the promise of the title. Like you're, uh, write this down. Your YouTube video makes a promise. And then... The, or your YouTube title makes a promise, and then your YouTube video delivers on that promise. So he said 50 video ideas. So he's like, number one. Like, people know why they're there. You don't have to be like, so in this video, I'm going to be telling you about 50 video ideas. And you're like pontificating and educating around that. Like, you can try just trimming all the fluff, getting straight to the point. All right, let's check out one more example. And what's unique about this one is this is a live stream. Now, I've been trying to grow, like I said, in my practice and preparation season for years as a communicator and whatnot. But I, I just went straight into this. If you look at the time code on this video, it's one hour and 57 minutes long. This was a coffee with candle show. And so I, hit, I just hit live and I started at the beginning, but I definitely planned this out. I took, I took a lot of time to plan it out and practice it. And here was my press record and just start the hook. So let's check it out. 
So what does it really take to go full time on YouTube? You know, after growing a couple different channels to over 100,000 subscribers, getting three silver play buttons, our main channel, Think Media, to over a million, getting that gold play button, and interviewing hundreds of entrepreneurs and creators, I've noticed some trends and some pitfalls uh, when it comes to going full time on YouTube. I've noticed some things that those that really succeed over the long haul have. And I've noticed those that have gotten stuck or have actually stopped growing mistakes and traps they've fallen into. And so I'm really excited because in this video, I'm going to be breaking down our brand new YouTube domination framework, which will help you get more clarity on your journey to going full time. Maybe you're kind of unsure about your next step or where you are on the journey and what to expect next. I believe you're going to get a lot of value out of this video. And some recent data has actually been revealed that uh, YouTube's creator economy is bigger and more profitable than ever before. So there really has been never a better time. This next decade is going to be the best decade on YouTube. And it revealed that 2 million creators have joined YouTube's partner program, and they get a share of the site's revenue. I'm sure you know how the program works, which totaled $46 billion over the past three years. What's crazy is 30, million, 30 billion with a B has been paid to creators in the last three years of that money. So that's just one way to make money, the YouTube Partner Program. And this article from Fortune is talking about these trends happening in the creator economy that are just absolutely massive. It also says that the growing creator economy has helped not just the superstars with the largest audiences, but has also enabled a middle class of creators. So what's exciting about that, it goes deeper in the article, and we'll link to it in the description below, that um, the middle class of YouTube creators is not just making their money off AdSense, but they figured out multiple different ways to earn money. They've really created a business. And I don't know, let me know in the comments, do you think of your YouTube channel as a business or as more of a hobby? Because those that are really going full-time, and that's our mission here at Think Media, to help 10,000 purpose-driven people create a full-time living doing what they love while making a difference in the world with YouTube, they are carving out this path that it's more practical than ever. You may have seen the signal fire stats. This is the fastest growing small business type. So today, though, I want to talk about the YouTube domination framework and how to create consistent success on YouTube. Smash like if you're fired up. And I'm going to be talking about the lessons I've learned after getting. So I want you to notice a lot about that. And let me know some of the things you notice with that. But I would consider what you just watched the hook. It was a couple minutes long. I didn't introduce myself. I didn't introduce the show. I didn't ask anyone to uh, leave a like or anything. I did ask, say, let me know what your ambition is and ask people to leave a comment. And so what we are encouraging you to do, especially in 2021 and beyond in this next decade, is really lean into potentially the value-based hook. Explore leaving behind the idea of like, so here's what I'm going to tell you. Just start telling the person. Like, just start telling the viewer get right into the value, cut straight to the chase, and potentially front load your video with a ton of value right up front, and then potentially introduce, like, so I went for a couple minutes, and I'm like, but hey, this is actually the Coffee with Candle show, and then I'll even tell a little bit about uh, maybe here's what our mission is at Think Media or things like that. And so write some of these ideas down. One idea is you can open up with a opening question. Are you interested in doing something like this? Do you uh, want to be a part of this? Have you been trying to figure this out? Another thing I included in here, and again, this was a more of a teaching content and it was a live stream, is I built authority. I said, you know, my experience was, and you don't have to have a gold play button or anything like that. Imagine if you said, you know, after doing four years to get my master's degree or, you know, after serving at, at the church for 10 years in leadership positions or after volunteering, you know, or being a part of that business, I was building authority, right? I was building credibility by saying I made some mistakes and I'm actually going to be teaching through those. I also illuminated danger. I said, you know, I, I really have discovered some things you're going to want to avoid. Think about these all matter. This powers up your hook so people want to keep watching. Like some of the stuff I'm going to share with you, like if you don't fix this, it's going to cause, it's, there's danger ahead. I better keep watching. 
You want to agitate the problem. You want to point towards what some of the opportunities are and help people avoid danger. Agitating the problem is the next one. Wanted to say, but the problem is, maybe you're trying to be an influencer and you're not building a real business. The problem is a lot of people are getting burnt out. The problem is, like, what's the problem? Agitate the problem and bring people into that. Next, I use third-party data. If you just open up a video and you're like, so my opinion on the future of YouTube, like, this isn't my opinion. This is the fastest growing business type, Signal Fire said. I pull up Fortune. And by the way, we're using StreamYard. And you know, StreamYard is one of the sponsors of the conference, but we are in love with StreamYard. They make it possible to make videos like that really easy and be able to share your screen. And you know, even like I'm sharing slides right now, this is pretty complex what we're doing here at Grow a Video Live. You could do that really powerfully with StreamYard and easily as a one man, one woman show. And so I'm, I'm finding an article and I'm finding out authority outside of myself with third party data. And then I'm adding value before I introduce myself. So add value before you introduce yourself. Uh, one of our favorite books at Think Media that we think everybody should read in this decade in regards to hooks is called Hook Point, how to stand out in a three second wor world. And how powerful is that to think that you only have three seconds to stand out. And I want to encourage you. Um, I know you've been leaving reviews, and thank you for leaving reviews on the Think Media podcast. The author of Hook Point, Brendan Kane, was on the Think Media podcast. Incredible episode. You could check that out in the library, but I highly recommend that book, audiobook, or ebook as well. But remember, Enjoy the journey and strive to get 1% better with each upload. The call to action for you is that your next hook will be your best hook. Now that you know this information, you're accountable to apply it on your videos. But if you got value in this video, let me know by hitting that like button. And if you wanna level up your personal brand this year with online video, then check out our free training at 21videotips.com where the leading experts in video marketing share their latest secrets on how you could build a personal brand this year using online video.